What's up, guys? Andrew Goldfarb here from IGN. I am with Ken Levine, creative director in Bioshock Infinite. Uh, Ken, we're at kind of an early part of uh, Bioshock Infinite. You're, you're coming to this fair early in the game. And I just wanted to talk to you today about some of these posters that we're seeing, some of this sort of the propaganda hung around Columbia. Yeah. See if there's anything you can say about these. Yeah, I mean, we tell so a fair amount of the story you can get from the posters, and we, d we generally don't rely upon it to tell the whole story, but they're really good reinforcement. And they just say a lot about the, the world. You know, you can see here you've come across this statue of Columbia, the Angel Columbia, almost like the Statue of Liberty, and you see this poster nearby. This is the tower. This tower protects the lamb from the false shepherd. And the player at this point is not really going to know what any of those things I mean. Lamb, false shepherd, the tower is clear, but, um, but and they start getting little bits of information and they start learning about the vigors in the world, murder crows, and actually we love this guy. This guy is actually a piece of period art that we found and he was on an advertisement. We obviously modified to put the Murder of Crows bottle and everything, but I just love that that guy was like a spokes. That was that was this, the turn of the century spokesperson for something. And there's all this great art we found and we modified that were very very odd. Some of it we created ourselves like that, and some of it we just, we we modified. Um, there's a sort of naivete to it. This is where we start learning about vigors. And so these are largely, or at least inspired by actual period art? Some of them are, but so they're showing the style. Like, this is inspired by the style of the period. This is actually, that man's a piece of art from the period that we sort of licensed. And, uh, well, it's funny with Murder of Crows specifically because that, that bottle has become so iconic, you know, because there is that actual physical Murder of Crows vigor people have seen. Yep, yep. And you can see these guys are using some of the vigors to, to demonstrate them, these little devil figures, um, which I thought was a really cool idea. Um, that Sean and I think Sean and his guys came up with, uh, and you start seeing signs for this raffle and fair, and you go into the fair here. And one thing we wanted to do is, you know, we don't like training sequences per se. Like Bioshock One didn't really have a specific training sequence. So I think it can get really slow things down. So the fair effectively is an optional sequence where you can start using things like vigors. This is a vigor called um, called Bucking Bronco, and you sort of in the context of playing this game. Um, you get to sort of practice with this vigor and learn the interface for it. And you get some on-screen help. Oop, I hit the girl instead of the <laughs> devil. Did it again. I am a failure. <laughs> Ken Levine can't play his game. So, you, so I, I elevated, used Bucking Bronco to elevate that, that demon guy in the air. And we just really liked um, sort of the simplicity of these things and the charming nature of them. And also, so put you in the world and train you. And there's several of these. There's there's a, a shotgun one over here. We get to, to shoot at, at these, vox, these, these figures of the Vox, and this also serves to introduce you to these characters, the Vox Populi, and how people feel about them in the world, that they're, um, they're sort of the, the hated enemy of the world. Yeah, it's impressive how you guys kind of accomplished two things here, because you're really introducing the fiction in addition to, in addition to the mechanics, and I think it, it actually works really well. Was there any, you know, were you guys at all nervous about kind of people can walk by these boots, like they are all optional. Uh, were you nervous that people might miss core mechanics? Yeah, well that, you know, that is unfortunately, that is the, pr pr the price of admission sometimes in a rational game is that some of your best stuff can be missed. But to, for our, our feeling is that the joy of finding something that you feel you found that nobody forced you to, that nobody forced your face to, is, um, is very so powerful that it's worth the risk. And we have, but the way we deal with that problem is generally redundancy. Like for instance, there's training. We have this system that will observe the player and if he's not using weapons properly or not using vigors properly, I mean, the, the training will, will pop up. You'll see the not either modal or generally non-modal text will pop up and say, you know, remind you of what you, or tell you, give you some hints as to what you're doing. But it puts the onus on us rather than the gamer to, um, to learn how to play the game. And we'd always rather put the onus on ourselves because the gamer just wants to have a good time and he's paid, he's put down his money to do it. It's another shooting game here, deals with a different, different weapon. I like seeing those mechanical horses back there because that was one of the first things we saw. That was, uh, I think, in the original 2010 yep. demo that concept was first introduced. Yep. You get a sense of this guy, the handyman. Obviously, he's got some difficult life here. And it's really interesting here seeing him too, because I mean, he will be an enemy later, but he's so docile right now. You know, he's he's scared of camera flashes. It's kind of cool seeing that evolution. Yeah, it creates some empathy with him. These girls selling their wares. Well, take, it's time to take back control from the men of metal. With possession, you are the master. Buy the ticket. You try to buy a ticket. The guy tells you you can't come in, 
And um, lo and behold, this lady is nice enough to, um, to, to sell it to you. Yeah, it's cool seeing, uh, you know, this is, this is the first vigor you actually get of your own uh, possession vigor. And it, it's cool even just the different mechanics you get on this. Um, you know, you guys have a cool system where you, when, you know, with, without spoiling what they actually do, as you upgrade these, their effects can become very different, a little broader. And I think that's a really interesting way of doing things. Yeah, each figure has several upgrades and each figure has this sort of introductory sequence that gives you a sense of what it does. So now you have this possession thing that initially can just possess machines, but shortly later you'll be able to, we have all these little sort of tur turn of the century films that show, um, to give you a very quick training on how they work. Um, and those were done by the same guy, by Rob Waters, who did the, those little mini training films in Bioshock 1. Um, and then, you know, sort of you go up to the, um, to this machine that wouldn't let you buy and you possess the machine and all of a sudden it thinks you're somebody else and recognizes you and lets you enter the raffle. I mean, was there a specific uh, idea behind figures being bottles as opposed to kind of what we saw with plasmids and Bioshock 1? There was a, you know, the period is full of, there's something called patent medicines of the period, which were effectively um, either placebos, poison, like sometimes they were full of radium, um, or they were, um, um, you know, what would now be a controlled substance. So they had like, oh, you know, you have a colicky baby, take this, and it's a combination literally of heroin and cocaine and uh, chloroform. And so you had all these crazy medicines. There was no FDA or anything like that back then. So you, it was a really interesting phenomenon. They made these insane claims and they were usually full of very dangerous chemicals. So we just like that idea of, of things in bottles because that it just brought us back to the patent medicine period. That's really interesting. Well, you'll find out a lot more about Vigors as you continue to play Bioshock Infinite. But until then, keep it locked to IGN for more and more content.